Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. It's time for another thrilling installment of Bedtime Tales. Written by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Alfen. Will there be more goblins who don't look like goblins? I don't think in the next few stories, because I, I had to thumb it through a couple pages to make sure that where I left the bookmark was the right place. Hmm. Ah, oh, three Aesop fables in a row. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, starting off, the fox and the crow. A crow once stole a piece of cheese and flew with it into a high tree. A fox was passing by at the time, and his mouth watered at the sight of the cheese. But how can I make the crow drop it, he wondered. And then he had a very clever idea. Crow, called the fox. You are the most beautiful crow I have ever seen. Your feathers are glossy, your eyes are bright, and your talons must be the envy of every bird of prey. I'm sure that your voice must be equally magnificent. The crow was proud of such flattering remarks. He puffed out his chest and opened his beak to show the fox what a wonderful caw he had. The piece of cheese fell onto the ground and was immediately snapped up by the fox. The poor crow felt very foolish. He had been silly to listen to the crafty fox, for it is well known that there are many who will flatter and give false praise because they want something for themselves. <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere. Ah, uh, so they say. I think we also mentioned in one of our podcasts that that's the first thing a mentalist will do is say something about themselves that matches something about you. Yes, so that you'll have that mental trigger of this person is like me because humans have a tendency to group together with similarities. You don't exactly see a lot of outliers at conventions. Think about that for a second. Mm. <laughs> and when there are, they're usually hunting for a story and stand out like a sore thumb. Oh boy. All right. The fisherman and the little fish. A man once caught a tiny fish. I'm too small for a good meal, pleaded the little fish. Throw me back and let me grow. I'll be a tasty mouthful next time I'm caught. So don't kill me now, kill me later. <laughs> Something about a hamburger if, and I'll pay you tomorrow? I'll, I'll gladly pay you on Tuesday for a hamburger today. This was the only catch the fisherman had made. And he wanted to return home with something. If I do what you ask, I might never see you again, he said. It's better to catch one small fish than to hope for any number of large fishes. It's kind of like they say when you're trying to build your self-esteem. If you can do one task, even badly, do that task. I was going to go with, you know, bird in the hand worth two in the bush. Yeah. What you have is of more value than what you might get. Hmm. Because what you have is certain. Well, sometimes we hang on to negative emotions and old stuff that we don't need anymore because it's ours. Mm -hmm. The hen and the golden egg. A woman had a hen that laid a golden egg each day, but the woman wasn't satisfied. One golden egg a day isn't really enough to become rich, she complained. So she killed the hen and cut it open, hoping to find a whole batch of golden eggs inside. Alas, there was nothing there at all. And now the woman had no hen and no golden eggs. This sad tale proves that if you want more than you have already, you may end up with nothing. Mm, don't be too greedy. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, you could actually become rich off of a golden egg every day. Assuming it's actually gold and not just golden colored. Yeah. And depending on what the going rate for gold is and if you can find a buyer... But yeah, we switched fairy tale tellers. We're now over to Browning instead of Aesop. Hmm. Oh, here's a classic. Mm-hmm. The Pied Piper. Once upon a time, there was a town in Germany that was plagued by rats. They ran everywhere. In the streets, in the houses, in the kitchens, and in the food itself. At last, the mayor of the town promised that whoever got rid of the rats would receive an enormous reward. Very soon, a strange-looking man appeared at the town hall. He was dressed in yellow and red, and he had a flute in his hand. Leave it to me, he said. I will get rid of the rats. The mayor agreed, and the Pied Piper played a strange little tune on his flute. Immediately, hundreds of rats tumbled out of every nook and cranny and followed the piper down to a river. They all jumped into the river and were drowned. The mayor was delighted. 
but as he was very cheap, he refused to give the Pied Piper his promised reward. Then the Pied Piper put the flute to his lips, but this time all the children of the town followed him, deep into a mountain cave, where they all vanished and were never seen again. It is said that those children grew up happy and carefree in a far-off land, a long way away from the town with its cheap-minded mare. That's kind of been sanitized a little bit, because in, in almost all the versions of this I've heard, the kids die. Yeah, very, very sanitized. Also, apparently, this is actually based on an actual event that happened. We know where the town is. <laughs> well, traveling troops of rat catchers were actually a thing. And, yeah, I mean, if you're going to take all the children and they're going to survive, they're probably going to be sold in slavery. Oof. But, yeah, as punishment, he rewarded all the children. That makes total sense. Yeah. And now for something a little more modern. Car washing. Yay. You're going to take care of mine later, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, with the right equipment, I could. Sarah, will you help me wash the car? Asked Dad one Saturday morning. Sarah was very willing. She fetched a bucket of soapy water and sponged the car all over. Now take the hose, said Dad, and wash off all the soap. Dad climbed inside the car to clean off the seats, and Sarah attached the hose to a faucet. She turned it on and swooshed the hose all over the car to remove the suds. Sarah! roared Dad. What are you doing? He climbed out of the car. He was drenched from head to foot. Oh dear, Sarah had forgotten to close the car window. Next time, said Dad grimly, you can do the inside. Who washes the car with the window down? How did you get the window clean if it wasn't there to put soapy water on? Yeah, it's also clearly showing up in the top picture here. Yes. That's also why, I, before we started reading the story, I was looking at the lower picture, which shows the dad getting blasted in the face by the hose. I was trying to figure out, like, okay, the, the window looks like it's actually rolled up, but the head is there, so is he standing outside? Except you can't see any feet there, and yeah. then you read the story, and yeah. Sorry, as the adult supervising the task, you're at fault here. Now, if he was standing outside, then it might be the kid's fault. But he... Wi inside the car, which means very clearly he had access to the mechanisms to close the window, because you can only do that from the inside of the car. And he was inside the car, so he should have been able to very clearly tell that the window he was right next to was open. Farmyard visit. The farm animals were furious. A group of school children had just visited the farm, and they had been very bad. The cows had been teased, the sheep's wool had been pulled, and the ducks and chickens had been chased around the yard, and all the children had stared at them in a very rude manner. How would they like it if we visited them in their homes, said Basil Bull, and pulled their hair, added Emily Sheep. Then Harry Horse had a very good idea. Let's go and visit those children, he suggested. Let's stare at them and chase them round their yards. It all sounded great fun. Each animal chose a different child to visit, and then they all set out for the town. Mom, there's a bull at the window, screamed Sally. He's staring at me. Shoo, went Sally's mother, and Basil Bull moved off, trampling the tulips as he went. Help, yelled Billy, as Henry Horse chased him all the way home from the mailbox. Ouch, cried Peter, as a chicken pecked his leg. Don't do that, shouted Mandy, as a sheep pulled her hair. Well, that should teach them a lesson, said Basil Bull, as all the animals tramped back to the farm. Later, all the children thought about how bad they had been on the farm, and how nasty it was to be treated the same way. And they never, ever acted like that again. I only have a small problem with this story. I don't think the kids would have associated the pecking and the hair pulling with what they did at the farm. No. So that's the only, only also, how did the animals get loose? Why didn't animal control find them on the way? Especially with that staring bull. I can see, you know, smaller animals like the chicken and possibly the sheep, depending on the size. But a loose horse and a loose bull definitely attract attention. Especially when chasing a child. And small little thing about the 
part, the hair on the side of her head here should actually be facing the same way the rest of the lines here are indicating her hair being pulled. Because it is being pulled, so it should all have the same tension in the same direction. Mm -hmm, especially with hair that long. Yeah. Well, they had to make it long enough for the sheep to pull easily. But if the sheep had to get up on its hind legs to grab it, then it would knock her to the ground, not just pull her hair. And this has been another thrilling installment of Bedtime Tales. Written by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. We're definitely over halfway through this book. Have you picked it up yet? Did you want to? Check for the links. There's got to be at least one Amazon listing, even if it's not in print. Also, Ebates, because I can. I mean, I, I recently heard a Rakuten who owns Ebates, radio ad, and they were using my catchphrase. Save money on stuff you were planning on buying anyways. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.